Okay, so this is my video and it's on my car, which is a Peugeot 205 GTI. Um, where do you start? It's a classic car, it's been around for years and years now, but it's one of those cars that kind of gets overlooked a little bit. Obviously the Golf GTI kind of had all its glory and stuff like that because it invented the whole hot hatch thing and started it right off. Peugeot took that idea and improved on it a little bit. Basically just a little bit more power, a few tweaks here and there and created a car that's pretty much sat at the top of everyone's lists of something that you need to drive. Um, and I think the main reason for that is probably feel. Uh, well, what you get with a lot of cars these days is obviously as much electronics as there are mechanicals. And while that's great, it's kind of, it does detract a little bit from the car, I think. I mean, when you've got a myriad of computer chips making decisions for you, and it's, it's just not quite the same as what it used to be when you got a car. It was a steering wheel, it was connected to the wheels. You had a brake pedal, it was connected to the brakes. There was no computer chips in between that. And that's the best thing about this car, I think, is just the fact that it's completely and utterly an extension of your own arms and feet, as opposed to a computer doing the job for you. And that's pretty much what I think everyone needs to experience one of these or a Golf GTI. But they're just great great cars for that feel that just being attached to the road is just a fantastic feeling car and i mean it wasn't really a great departure from the golf gti i mean the engine is more powerful you're talking 130 brake in my one which is a 1.9 liter and that's enough to make it sort of really grunty kind of similar to a diesel in that it's quite talky and you get quite a lot of punch a really eager feeling car. Fantastic because obviously you put your foot on the pedals, you've got this sort of connection to the engine, you can actually feel the cable as it moves. It's a really perky, peppy little car, it's great fun to drive. And even though the acceleration isn't devastating and it's never going to sort of blow anything out of the water, you always feel like you're going faster than you actually are, which is great, you know, you're not going to end up burning past some set of cameras and throwing them out and ending up with seven points on your license or whatever so it's, it's a really good car for being able to just thrash but it's a real world kind of thrash really you don't have to worry about sort of blowing your license in the space of a few months of owning one although it is tempting to be honest um but yeah i mean that just that fantastic engine it's lumpy to be honest it is an old design but you've got this great sort of burbly rasp that you get from it when you actually properly rev it through the range and as I said just great lumps of torque really just it's got a bit of pep to it it's hard to describe for want of a better word really but it's just a really eager little car to drive and that just goes straight into the handling from there I mean such a fantastic feeling car I am banging on and on about feel but most important thing of any car, any performance car anyway, you want to actually feel what the car's doing so you know where you're going. I mean, the great thing about the 205 was, in this model particularly, with the no power steering option, you are pretty much connected to the wheels. You can feel the rubber actually squirming as you go around corners. It's a really brilliant feel because you can push the car right to its limits. And you can find them if you try and it's great, you know, you've just got this really edgy, sort of fantastic steering. Downsides, it's a little bit twitchy, uh, because it's such a short, lightweight car, short wheelbase, lightweight car. It does have a tendency for oversteer, so if you do push your luck with it, it will show you that you're trying too hard, and it will sort of flick out a bit on you, which is great. I mean, for a front-wheel drive car, it's not to understeer it, it's really actually you get a bit of oversteer if anything else so you do on wet roads have to sort of keep your wits about you a bit but again that just adds to the whole fun and the whole character of the car just a really zesty sort of fantastic great drive and yeah just really brilliant handling when you're railing it into a corner you can feel those tires gripping you can feel when it's going to let go so you can know when to back off it's like driving a go-kart basically just really really brilliant and one of the great things that I love about it is just even despite the fact that it's now 20 plus years old 
it's still a great looking car. I mean, admittedly, it's aged a little bit, but the design itself, you know, you clean it up, you leave it in a car park, people still look at it. And it's because it's such a classic 80s hot hatch, even though the styling is probably a bit outdated now to a degree, it's still a very classic look and it still has its own look. And that's something I don't think you get with a lot of modern cars. They're obviously very sort of follow a formula. A lot of cars will tend to sort of stick to a particular design for a number of years and then someone will bring out something new. Everyone else will kind of copy that in a sort of sense and then you'll end up with a lot of cars that are pretty much nameless, faceless. And what was nice about the Peugeot was just completely original design and even to this day they haven't really made anything like it that's just that sort of stubby little car. But yeah, fantastic looking bit of kit and as I said, you can get to where are we 20 years down the line now? It looks as good as the day it rolled off the showroom. There are obviously negatives to the whole experience. Um, the engine is fairly ropey. Engine management on it is not great, so fuel consumption is poor, and at idle it's actually very lumpy. Now, that's make of that what you will, really. I mean, it's great that you can get this sort of torquey engine. It sucks that after about, I don't know, 40 miles or so, you're ending up to throw another 20 quid in the tank. But at the end of the day, this was a car that was made when fuel wasn't a pound 36 a litre, and it wasn't such a concern with emissions, engine control, that sort of thing. So if you can forgive it, that sort of thing, no worries. Um, the other thing would be noise. There's literally no sound deadening in this thing whatsoever, basically like being in a kettle drum. So as soon as you get up to about 70 miles an hour on the motorway, you know about it. Um, massive tyre roar, quite loud. But at the end of the day, turn the stereo up. And the fact that this thing handles so brilliantly and there's so much feedback when you actually got the thing up at speed, you instantly forget about any of the issues that you might have with it. And yeah, I guess that's it. Hope you like the review. As I said, pretty concise, but uh, hope it's good. Cheers.